Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that the video is going to find you guys in with health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin this video by looking at some three very important facts. The first fact is that Rigathi Gashagwa has been impeached. And I doubt whether Rigathi Gashagwa will actually get justice from the courts. He remains impeached. And because of that, Rigathi Gashagwa will not be eligible to run for the presidency for 10 good years. Which means in 2027, Rigathi Gashagwa will neither be a running mate to anybody, neither will he be a presidential candidate. But one fact remains that Rigathi Gashagwa is going to be a factor in 2027. So that's the first fact. The second fact is that William Ruto currently is very unpopular in the Republic of Kenya. If elections were to be held in the Republic of Kenya today, and Kenyans were to be given ballot boxes and ballot papers to cast, very few of them will vote for William Ruto. But the question has always been, who is the alternative? Who can defeat William Ruto? in 2027 because he might be very unpopular yes but who can defeat him let me ask you that question again who do you think can defeat william roto in 2027 i've talked to so many people and they've always told me that lee if william roto were to contest against kalonzo musioka then william roto will easily defeat kalonzo musioka and i've always asked them who then can defeat William Ruto, the answer, especially I always get from the mountain, is that the person who can easily defeat William Ruto in 2027 is none other than Raila Amolodinga. But again, I'm not so sure whether Raila Odinga will still be in politics in 2027. I strongly believe that if Raila Odinga were to secure his AU bid, his chances of exiting political scene are very high. And even if he were not to win it, probably he will support William Samoy Arap Ruto. In fact, William Ruto is banking 100% on the support of Raila Mulodinga to win his re-election in 2027. So that's the second fact. William Ruto is very, very unpopular. But the question is, who can defeat him? The third fact, which is also very clear, is that the mountain will be a major factor in 2027 presidential election. The mountain will be a factor by virtue of their numbers. But I've been thinking about these other candidates. Who can defeat William Ruto? And I'm coming to the conclusion that if Kalonzo Musioka were to get serious a bit because he's currently joking, then he can easily defeat William Samoy Arap Ruto. So in this video, I want to reveal to you guys why I strongly believe that if Kanozo Musioka were to put a bit of effort, then he can easily defeat William Roto. I'm saying that because based on my own observation, if elections were to be held today and Kanozo Musioka is pitted against William Roto, William Roto can easily defeat him. Because I've been looking at Kanozo Musioka and the people he's attracting to his side. And I don't see whether I, I don't see any chance of him defeating Ruto. For example, Kanozo Musioka is always in the company of Jeremiah Kioni. He's always in the company of uh, Eugene Omalwa. The company of uh, the former Kiambu governor, Ferdinand Waititu. And of course, the, the Ukambani brigades. I doubt if those individuals can defeat William Ruto. But I've also been thinking about a ticket of, uh, let's say, Babu Owino and Dindi Nyoro, where Dindi Nyoro is a presidential candidate and Babu Owino are running it. That ticket, if you were to materialize, can easily defeat, in my view, William Ruto. But let me explain to you guys why I strongly believe that if Kanozo Musioka were to put a bit of more effort, he can transfer over William Ruto. But before you do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. 
and to the subscribers i want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support this channel cannot be where it is ladies and gentlemen without any further ado allow me to dive in do you think regarding the shaga will get justice in our courts let me reframe it because i post this question on twitter and it seems most people did not get the drift i was trying to arrive at and my question was do you think justice martha come can stop william ruto from impeaching Rigathi Gashagwa and installing Professor Kithuri Kendeki. I've mentioned four people there. We have Chief Justice Martha Kome, which is the judiciary. We have William Roto, who is the executive, and now trying to implement his wish. Most people have told me that the judiciary will follow the rule of law. But in this matter, I have my doubts. I have my doubts. But let us not get into that for now. For now, let us focus on why I strongly believe that Kalonzo, if well packaged, if well managed, can easily defeat William Ruto. Number one, I've always told you that politics is a game of numbers. And those numbers must be real and must be perceived. And the other fact is that currently, William Ruto is a bit unpopular, not the way he was before. Which means Kalonzo Musyoka can rally the Ukambani vote, which of course the, the day Kalonzo Musyoka will declare his bid, the entire Ukambani will be wiped. Then now we are going to the mountain. If the mountain can rally around Kalonzo, because clearly the mountain today is anti William Ruto. Politics do change, but as we speak, as we speak, I doubt even if William Ruto is getting 20% uh, of the mountain. So if Kalonzo can consolidate the mountain using strategy, Mount Kenya has 4.7 million votes, Nairobi has 2.4 million votes. Nairobi is almost half of it, Mount Kenya. You add Ukambani. You get the drift there. 2.4 million in Nairobi. Mount Kenya almost half of it. Just check the number of votes William Ruto got. Ukambani has around 300,000-400,000 votes in Nairobi. So which means Nairobi, he can easily get that vote. Nakuru has 1 million votes. Certainly 1 million, over 1 million. Mostly Kikuyus. <laughs> so Kalonzo can bank on that if the Kikuyu nation were to support him. Then now you go to Meru with 700,000 votes, you go to Tharaka. Of course, Meru, Tharaka, you can now say because of Kithure Kindiki, they might go the other side, which is still very doubtful based on the mood of the ground. The only thing Kalonzo will then need is to try and do two things. One thing, ensure there is voter apathy in Rayo Dinga strongholds. In case they intend to vote for Ruto, ensure there is apathy. And that apathy can actually be caused. I've been talking to so many people and they tell me, Lee, as long as Rayo Dinga will not be on the ballot, we might not vote. So you can take advantage of that. Two, Kalozo should not let Rayo Dinga support to base drift away. And is letting it drift from him. You know why? Because of Jeremiah Jerema Kioni and because of Eugene Wamalwa. And that's why I strongly believe that one of the immediate things Kalonzo should do is to shed off Jeremiah Kioni and Eugene Wamalwa. Those two individuals will not bring him any vote. I'm saying that because if you are to ask me, Rayo Dinga strongholds are still not very happy with the fact that Rayo Dinga started working with William Ruto. On the finance bill, they are very angry. And even if you look at the impeachment of Rigadi Gashagwa, most of them are not very happy. So which means if Kalonzo were to try and get just a half of Rayo Dinga support base, which he can easily get, by the way, if he's serious, then he will be home and dry. That is my take. Kalonzo and the game of numbers 
Game of numbers are, are actually favoring Steven Kalondo Musioka. But he's yet to realize that. When he's engaging uh, Wamalwa to fight Raila, instead of engaging Wamalwa to win Raila Odinga support base. Because Raila Odinga, I doubt if Raila Odinga is even concerned with whatever they are doing. <laughs> so that's number one. Number two, there is a voting block which is going to be a major factor in 2027, which is the Gen Z's. The only problem with Kalonzo Musioka, and this is a fact, is that Kalonzo Musioka is not inspiring. When he speaks, he doesn't inspire people. That is the major problem. And because Kalonzo is not inspiring, that's why you are here to see a major player during the Gen Z protest looking for Kalonzo Musioka or even Kalonzo Musioka looking for them. The other day you saw Morara reaching out to Rigedi Gashagwa. The truth is, Rigedi Gashagwa is a bit inspiring in a way compared to Kalonzo. But what can Kalonzo Musioka do to win the support of the Gensis? What can he do? His team must come up with a strategy of making Kalonzo appealing to the Gensis. The Gensis of the Republic of Kenya, as we speak today, are very angry and bitter with William Ruto. Their rage is on another level. So which means, because politics is dynamic and it keeps on changing, William Ruto might actually win them back with the time. Because they are looking around and they are not seeing any, any seriousness in Kalonzo Musioka. So far, Kalonzo has done a poor job with the agencies. How many agencies were buried in the Republic of Kenya across the entire nation? How many of those agencies Kalonzo Musioka personally attended their funeral? I never saw Kalonzo in Nyanza. I never saw Kalonzo attending a funeral of agency in, uh, in uh, coastal region, in Luyan Nation, in Kisi. At least I saw Babu Oino attending some. So those small things, they matter. They matter. I'm not so sure even whether Kalonzo Musioka visited the agencies who were maimed, who were hospitalized. I'm not so sure. But that's a voting block, which is under William Ruto, but they don't know where to go to. So far, nobody has actually emerged to win them. And that's why I keep on repeating. If Ndindi Nyoro and Babu Wina were to pair, because Babu is keen on winning the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. If Babu Wino and Nidhi Nyoro were to just decide that we are running for the presidency as a ticket, that's a serious challenge. So for me, for Kanozo Musioka to succeed, he must do one thing. He must look for someone like Edwin Sefuna. Work with Edwin Sefuna and maybe make even, even Edwin Sefuna his running mate. Yeah, he can't do that. Instead of working very closely with the Wamalwa, Kalonzo should look for someone like Natambea. I'm not so sure whether Natambea can risk his current gubernatorial seat to be Kalonzo Musioka's running mate. Because William Ruto has made that seat. William Ruto and Uru have made the running mate seat to be a useless seat. I'm not so sure. But that GNC factor can actually help Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Number three is something which I've mentioned. There are so many people around Kalonzo Musioka who are not adding any value to Kalonzo Musioka. Let me just get my phone. I want to go through Kalonzo Musioka's Facebook page. Huh? Just a minute. Kalonzo Musioka, just a minute. I just want to go through Kalonzo Musioka's Facebook page. I want to go to Kalonzo Musioka. Kalonzo Musioka's Facebook page. Good. This one here. If you go to Kalonzo Musioka's Facebook page, today he has wished Gideon Moy happy birthday. It's, actually, it's exactly 19.20. Read that three hours ago, based on this. But Gideon Moy had a birthday. That should have been the first thing Kalonzo Musioka ought to have done in the morning. Now, here, Kalonzo Musioka is with his team. We have come a long way. One of the most revolutionary clauses 
in light of this, Eugene and I have been at the Milimani to contest the yes. Now this is they are doing good good thing. They are in court over Adani, but that's a lawsuit by Tony Gashoka. So they are they are they are trying to ride on it. So if if I were them, they would have been the face from the onset of that case, which is which is a good thing. Huh? But you see these people here, the same. Huh? Here, Kalonzo was uh, in Mwingi three days ago. Kalonzo was in uh, Mwingi again. Kalonzo is in Mwingi still, also there. Kalonzo attended the wedding of Advocate Njiru. He was in in uh, in uh, Milimani High Court. Okay. So attending some funeral. But if you look at here, Kalonzo is always in the company of Eugene Omalo. Jeremiah Kioni, which for me, I doubt if they are adding value to him. I don't think. Number four is a winning information. What should preoccupy Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka's mind right now is crafting a winning formation. You see, William Ruto is currently working on a winning formula. He knows the mountain is gone. He's trying to persuade Azimio side. In fact, the reason why, why William Ruto impeached Regedi Gashagwa, according to very close sources I've spoken to, is because William Ruto knew or was informed by the NIS that Rigedi Gashagwa can easily remove him from office 7 through the ballot in 2027. That if by allowing uh, Rigedi Gashagwa, sorry, <clears throat> is that William Ruto was informed that Rigedi Gashagwa had the potential of removing him from office in 2027 through the ballot. Forget about the coup. That's not there. The truth is there was the fear that if Rigedi Gashagwa continued as a deputy president, and they were moving different direction. He was going to continue using state resources to move around the country. He was going to win the support and, of course, the sympathy. And the fact that he was using his position to consolidate the mountain. There was a strong feeling that if he was able, if he were going to be able to consolidate the mountain, it was going to be very easy for him to actually remove Ruto by either supporting someone or even himself deciding to run for the presidency. So the truth is, Winning formation is what Kalonzo Musyoka needs. And what is Kalonzo Musyoka's winning formation? In my view, if Kalonzo Musyoka were to run for the presidency, he needs a running mate from the lawyer nation. And he also needs someone to consolidate for him the Ikui nation. Period. If he can get a strong running mate from the lawyer nation, and in my view, two people fit the bill there. Either Edwin Sifona, he can even reach out to Timo Nyonyi, or or, in my view, the Transoya governor, George Natembea. He must work on a winning formation. And lastly, is the communication strategy. What is Stephen Kanazo Musioka's communication strategy as we speak? What is his communication strategy? Are you aware of anything Kanazo Musioka is standing for if you were to run today? Because he's already running. Do you know the platform is running on? Which means the team is yet to come up with a communication strategy. And part of that communication strategy is for me, number one, to sustain this anti-William Ruto's narrative. How can they sustain anti-William Ruto's narrative? The other day, an MCA was abducted in broad daylight from Wajia in Nairobi. A few weeks later, the MCA was found dumped in some river. William Ruto made a promise to Kenyans that he was not going under his watch. Kenyans are not going to witness people being dumped in rivers. It, you can't attribute that to William Ruto directly, but the government of Kenya has the responsibility of securing Kenyans. Why is Kanozo Musioka not talking about that? Why is he not organizing even a small demonstration in Garissa through his people? Today, Adani is a gold mine. Adani has signed a deal with uh, Adani Energy has signed some deal. Why is he not making noise about it? 
the JKI gold mine. So he doesn't have serious communication strategy. I remember when Raleigh Udinga was Raleigh Udinga and he used to have a clear communication strategy. Dennis Onyango would issue statement that you'd read and you sympathize with Kenya. Is it that Kalonzo cannot hire such kind of individuals to work for him? Because without a proper communication strategy, Kenyans will not take Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.